Oh, shoot. Hey, happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday. Uh, welcome to uh, Just Calvin, uh, where I talk Green Party uh, politics as well as just general subject matters. Uh, sometimes I'll go into modern monetary theory. Uh, sometimes I'll go into other things. Um, anyway, so from the green side of things, um, according to globalgreen.news, a green wave in Europe, uh, question mark, a uh, historic victory of German Greens, which, uh, which was dated a couple days ago, uh, actually yesterday, but anyway, uh, in the 2021 federal election of Germany, Greens won 14.8% of the vote nationwide and 16 parliamentary seats making it a historic outcome in their history. Now they are in talks to share power as part of a three-way coalition with two other minorities, Central Left so, uh, Social Democrats, or SPD, and Business-Focused Free Democrats. And well, I guess they, they are what the Republicans were, are here in regards to business. Anyway. Uh, Bolivia, Bolivia, excuse me, uh, Bavaria, Germany's southern state has a long history of voting conservative. <clears throat> However, a Greens candidate named Jamila Schaefer, yes, uh, I can pronounce the last name, was directly uh, elected as an MP in Munich South. This was the first time a green spot punctured the conservative blue blanket in Bavaria. It's interesting that the, the color of the conservatives there is blue. Anyway, uh, let's see, da, 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 blue, uh, in the Bavaria, this is the major sign of change that Schaefer told the BBC. 28-year-old Schaefer is the Greens' deputy federal chairwoman and typifies a party that has undergone a national makeover after years of power sharing in several German states. She has become a young activist uh, long before Swedish Greta Thunberg, Thun, uh, Thunberg made her name by skipping classes by, for climate protests, according to BBC News. Uh, let's see. Uh, apart from German, uh, uh, Germany, green parties are creeping rise, creeping rise in support in other European countries. And all those cases, the Greens are pressing their partners to adapt more ambitious targets for lowering carbon emissions elsewhere. The Green mayors of Amsterdam and Budapest are aiming for carbon neutrality by 2050 and 2030, respectively, to balance the greenhouse gases emitted and absorbed by their cities. Now, uh, on the same page, lower they have, um, I guess, is the um, the rise of green politics in Europe, percentage of votes won by green parties in the most recent uh, nation elections. In Switzerland, they won 13.2%. Uh, the Green Liberal Party, which I didn't know they even had, uh, won 7.8%. In Hungary, they had dialogue for Hungary, 119 and politics can be different, 71 Austria, the Greens, uh, thirteen point nine, and I guess now is uh, one is now called uh, Liz Pills, one point nine. Luxembourg, the Greens, fifteen point five. Number five, but it was one through one through ten. Germany uh, is fourteen point eight. Luxembourg, I don't know if I said, said that, but fifteen point one. Uh, Liechtenstein, which a free list, twelve point nine percent. Belgium, the uh, Flemish Greens, 6.1%. Uh, Ecolo, uh, 6.1%. Finland, Green Alliance, 115 uh, In Denmark, uni uh, Unity List. Uh, the Red Greens, 6.9%. Alternative, 3%. Portugal, the Greens slash Communist Party, 63 And Free, 1.1%. I'm not really sure what the free, uh, the free at the party are, but anyway. Um, despite the climate change campaigns, European Greens still have a long way to power uh, to the power. One of the biggest challenges is distru uh, distrust with Greens who do not have governing experience. 
The proposals of reducing carbon emissions from the Greens need significant economic reforms which scare people and put them off voting green. As a result, voters cannot trust Greens with the economy. The way to power for Eastern and Southern European Greens is much more difficult because climate change is far from a top priority in post-communist countries like Poland, Hungary, and Baltic countries. Political parties in those countries are about, oh, care about, excuse me, care about economic problems and immigration issues, leaving environmental proposals to civil society groups. Fun, uh, fortunately, Hungarian Greens are making their path to the parliament. The LNP, which uh, Hungary's Green Party, has won seats in three consecutive national elections since 2010. While Dialogue for Hungary, uh, not really sure what the, the, the different name uh, other than English, received 11.9% of the vote in alliance with the Hungarian Socialists in 2018. The leader of Dialogue, uh, I think it was Jirjili, uh, or uh, uh, Karaksani, I'm sorry if, if I murdered the first name, was elected as mayor of Budapest in 2019. In May 2021, he announced his candidacy for Prime Minister of Hungary, promising a new beginning that works for the 99% and not for the privileged 1%. Last month, he quit his primary race and joined a joint opposition uh, nominee to challenge uh, Viktor Orban. Other uh, European Greens are Greens, yeah, Greens, I know Greens, <laughs> Greens are facing predictable and unpredictable challenges. Their candidates have achieved success in history. For their future, they need to pay more attention to uniting, uniting excuse me, the opposition and, challenge, and, and uh, channeling voters' discontent. Greens' politics in Europe is getting bigger and stronger, and I'm sure it will grow in the coming years, Schaefer said uh, to BBC. This next one, uh, also from the same page, uh, quotes, I have high hopes for this coalition. It's a first for us interview with uh, Ingborg Hoffer. This is posted on 27, so just a couple days ago itself. After the German federal election on September 26 this year, the Greens took 14.8% of the popular vote, completing their best performance ever and third among all parties. Close to two months after the election, they are set to take government in a three-part coalition of the Social Democrats and Free Democrats. Uh, this arrangement has been deemed the traffic light coalition. Oh, that's what that means. Okay, coalition after the colors of the parties involved, and notably without the previously um, previously prom uh, prom prominent, excuse me, uh, Christian Democrats. The CDU has been in leading position in the government since 2000. Under the leadership of the former cha uh, chancellor, Dr. Angela, Mer uh, Dr. An Angela Merkel, Global, Greens new, uh, Go Global Green News uh, spoke to Mr. Ingbo uh, Ingborg Hoffer, who is a local representative for the uh, Green Party in Berlin, about their big win. A former tax consultant and member of the Berlin Chamber of Tax Advisors we had an interesting conversation about the coalition and future of the German party. Let's see. Global Green News asked if the three parties could govern effective, effectively between the Greens environmental agenda, the FDP's business first approach, and SPD's center left ideology. I've responded, I have high hopes this coalition will succeed as, first, uh, as the first for us. There is much optimism around this new coalition, despite some of the differences in the policy. The parties involved have already begun to make concessions to their own agendas. For example, the SPD and FDP have agreed to make major investments in climate protection, while the Greens have abandoned their plan to implement speed limits on Autobahn. Furthermore, Hoffer mentioned how the two-party system is over a German sta stating. We do not have a class society anymore. The society is more fractioned. 
thus referring to how people are now concentrating on voting for their key issues over the, their social economic assigned teams. We inquired about the perception of the Green Party in Germany and if it was becoming mainstream. She answered affirmatively and said, uh, all the issues we have been standing for have become the center of the political centers of this entire society. Our number, our number one issue is climate change and the Greens performance in Japan, Japan, excuse me, in Germany was no doubt bolstered by uh, vi uh, vi uh, viscous floods, which ravaged much of the Western part of the country during the summer. Aside from increased awareness of climate-induced damage, Hoffer illustrated how there has been a, social, uh, a societal norm shift towards increased equity, uh, equality excuse me, for all people. Hoffer told me that on all levels of government in the Green Party, regional, state, or federal, the Greens must have co-leaders where at least one is a woman the platform, is, uh, the platform of equality is in our DNA. In addition, green, uh, during Green Party meetings, a talking list uh, is set where the order must go woman, man, woman, man, starting with a woman. Uh, Ms. Hoffer says she has found this very helpful. It also seems this practice is catching on with other political parties as well. It may be this kind of idea sharing, which will make the next German coalition successful. More after this. This last piece of news from the Global Green Network uh, is entitled, The Green Party of the United States is not satisfied with Biden's plan on climate change and result of COP26. On October 28th of 2021, U.S. President Biden announced the Build Back Better Act, which primarily focused on focuses on universal child care, affordable health care, tax deduction, and climate change. The act proposed the largest effort to combat climate change in American history with around $500 billion in total, which is, 505, which is $55 billion per year. And the plan is uh, to provide energy, uh, clean energy tax credits on electric cars, clean energy usage, solar panels, and wind turbine blades, and etc. And also provides resources to uh, farmers, ranchers, and uh, forest lander owners to forest land owners to help to reduce the CO2 emissions, as Biden called it uh, in a press conference. And uh, it was to build back better Act will be a once-in-a-generation investment in our people. However, the Green Party of the United States criticizes the Biden's plan of combating climate change is still highly under underfunded. Thirty billion per year on climate change only amounts to one slash twenty-fifth of the U.S. military budget. And the Green Party called for a 100% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and wants the president to formally declare a climate emergency. Furthermore, the Green Party has also asked for Congress to fund a $2.7 trillion per year climate action plan instead of big, uh, Biden's Build Back Better plan. The COP's 26th summit ended on the 12th of November in Glasgow. Although many media coverage, coverages called it the last chance COP, many are disappointed by the results. The climate change, uh, the, sorry, the Climate Justice Alliance said the result of the COP26 uh, COP showed an utter disregard of the science and equity, false ambition and disdain for justice and license to pollute with net zero and carbon markets. The U.S. Green Party National Co-Chair Chris Steller or sorry, Stella, also stated the world's uh, political leaders in Glasgow paid lip service to the need for effective climate action while working behind closed doors to protect the profits of fossil fuel companies and their own campaign contributions. Uh, Nick looked at Twitter and said, Has the hashtag COP26 summit failed to produce the radical action we need to avoid climate collapse. The only way to prevent a catastrophe for humanity is a global hashtag Green New Deal, but Biden's Triple B plan offers just a tiny fraction of the climate action we need. 
uh, hashtag cop, uh, cop out 26 gp.org slash cop 26 underscore agreement. And it has a bunch of lines, so I guess it continues on. Chris, uh, further, uh, criticized Biden's uh, climate action led by President Biden, the industrial uh, polluters must respond for the climate, uh, for the climate cl crisis, continue to refuse to accept the responsibility for climate reparations to countries most damaged by burning fossil fuels. The Green Party in the United States proposed their own plan on climate change. The party demands a short-term mandatory climate action plan with goals and targets a cut on U.S. military ground, uh, greenhouses, uh, gas emissions, current, currently accounted for 6% of emission worldwide, an energy system that incorporates public ownership and de democratic control and a immediate declaration of climate emergency by the president. More after this. Uh, here's a little side note. Today at 4 p.m., I will be live streaming on Twitter the Ohio Freedom Rally, Mom uh, Against DeWine, uh, which is today starts at 4 o'clock. Uh, it will be at the Columbus, uh, the Columbus Club at 18, uh, 183 East Broad Street uh, in Columbus, Ohio, which is not very far from me, so I'll be able to live stream on Twitter. Um, let's see. And I find, I just on a different note here, I find it funny that that even though in the same week there's been two verdicts that, I, that I've, been, I've been paying attention to anyway. One is the Renton House verdict, which he was able to prove that he was acting in self-defense. The same person who shot he shot admitted under oath that he lunged at uh, Renton House with a gun and he got shot. So I mean, he was he was defending himself on all counts. As far as that part goes, there's also uh, lots of uh, lots of footage of him literally passing over his gun to someone else so he can help someone else who was injured. Um, for those who want to see all this, you can it's it's on YouTube. Jimmy Dore actually had. Uh, a uh, a um, I forget his name, unfortunately, right now, but uh, this guy had uh, let's just say, been wronged by Bernie Sanders in the past in regards to being on his team and all that stuff. Um, anyway, this guy, I keep forgetting his name, unfortunately. Um, and I'm still, I'm trying to get an interview with him too, and I, I keep I, I mess up on names a lot of times. Anyway, uh, this guy on uh, Jimmy Dore, uh, look up um, Jimmy Dore, TYT, uh, agree on Renton House. Um, TYT had to backtrack what they said about Renton House, but they they stayed with the core point that he shouldn't have brought a gun. Da, 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 da. Is that how stupid that was? Okay, great. Uh, Renton House has said under oath that he regrets bringing the gun with him. Okay. Uh, by the way, the gun was illegal for him to have as a 17 year old with a, I believe in Wisconsin, open carry laws state that a 17 year old can carry a i think it's like a between a 16 and 18 inch muzzle on a rifle and that's what he had um he also did state publicly and on the road that he went there to uh to to defend businesses which evidently he did because the people who keep trying to say that he that he pointed guns at people he was probably defending businesses at that at that time he didn't pull the trigger he didn't kill anybody that was not, you know, attacking him first. So I'm not looking at, at Renton House as a hero. I'm not, I'm not a right winger. I'm not, I'm a, I'm a green, I, I'm an independent Green Party person who, who sits here and, and, and talks to you about Green Party uh, activism and news and stuff like that. And I have that kind of opinion about Renton House. So if someone like myself who has that kind of opinion about Renton House, you know, it's not based on mainstream coverage. So, and now I hear that uh, there was uh, students with socialism um, at the University of Arizona, which I believe uh, he was accepted at, are trying to get him kicked out. Now, I can see if he was convicted of doing it. One, he wouldn't be there in the first place. He'd be in jail, I would assume. Uh, but 
they're trying to get him out of of, uh, of being admitted and for the University of Arizona to condemn and whatever. I, I, I don't really know what the, you can look it up at the article and actually, you know what? I think I have it. So let me see if I can find it now. Yeah, it's on news.yahoo. Um, according, this is according to Fox, so and yeah, who knows? They're kind of missing it, hit and miss. Uh, Arizona University students demand administration to withdraw Kyle Rotten. Uh, back when I was not exactly up to date as far as the actual information, I would, I would call him Rotten House. So that's my bad on that one. Uh, Rotten House, killer off our campus. Several left-leaning students, organizations of uh, Arizona State University, and demanding that their administration call, uh, uh, withdraw Kyle Rittenhouse from the university. The Arizona State University students for Socialism Students for the Justice in Palestine Multicultural Solidarity Coalition and Mecca uh, de Azul are all calling on the Arizona, Arizona State University administrator, administration to take action against Rittenhouse by withdrawing him from the university and releasing a statement against him. The four groups are calling, are calling him a murderer, Kyle Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse is found not guilty in all, on all charges against, uh, against him as jurors finished a deliberation on November 5th, November 19th, there we go. Uh, he faced uh, charges after failing shooting two people and shooting and injuring a third man during the riot in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Rittenhouse is a student at Arizona uh, State University online. Okay, he doesn't even, apparently he's, he's an online student. He doesn't go to the campus. So if he continues doing his thing online, this whole argument is moot. The groups also demand that the university administration reaffirm support for the multicultural center on campus as a safe space from white supremacy. Students uh, making these demands also want the administration to redirect funding from the Arizona State University Police Department to the multicultural center and there they are demanding the establishment of a care center on campus. I think that's where you have it right there. They try to defund the police, which depending on how much, uh, I think depending on how much uh, police uh, instances ha happen on that campus. I mean, I don't know if they have a, a latest down on that one, but um, but that's where I think that's where majority of, of, of all this grief is towards. I don't think of the Jens right now. I think they're accepting of that to a certain degree, but they're using it as a catalyst to defund the police. I'm not, I'm not big on police myself. I think that uh, the larger the police department, the more weapon, weaponry they do have, the likelier, uh, likelier, excuse me, of uh, them uh, acting out, knowing that they have the weapons, knowing they have um, the weaponry, the, the people behind them, administration behind them, pretty much depending on the situation and if they turn off those cameras on, on uh, that, that's on their suits or on their uh, uniforms. Um, so I'm not a big, I'm not a big police. Uh, I'm not a big police uh, liker either, but it seems like that's where it's going as far as that part goes. Anyway, so let's see. Da, da, da. Students may, okay, so the police department to the multicultural center. Okay. Uh, the groups are also hosting a rally and protest to get Murderer, uh, quotes, uh, Kyle Ren, uh, Rittenhouse off our campus on the, on the 1st of December. Now, first of all, they've actually gotten a lot of backlash online when they put this up. I, I looked at their feed on that. And they're not liked as far as that part goes, but there's a few that that uh, that caught my attention in regards to comments, one of which was... Uh, uh, that was the uh, oh, um, student debt bailout. Uh, it's not fair uh, unless, unless you get it. As far as bailouts, I personally, I think that every student uh, should have their debt cleaned, especially the ones that have already paid it. Those should get refunds. That's my position on that. Anyway, uh, see, Ren uh, was uh, even with a not guilty verdict from a flawed justice system. Kyle Rittenhouse is still guilty to his victims. And the families of those victims, the demand letter states. Join us to demand the ACU that those demands be met to protect students from a violent, bloodthirsty murderer. Uh, okay, a student, uh, a students for a socialist, uh, socialism, excuse me, socialism at 
Arizona State University spokesperson told Fox News, now first of all, why would they be on Fox News, uh, that the ultimate goal of the demand is to let the university uh, administration know that they do not feel the same, knowing that a mass shooter is not mass, he shot three people, and no, sorry, four people, and it was all under self-defense, so it's not like he's been around blasting people in the freaking face. Uh, these goals of these demands is to let the ACU administration know that we, okay, uh, do not feel uh, safe knowing that a mass shooter who has expressed violent intentions about protecting property over people is so carelessly allowed to be admit, uh, admitted to the school at all, the spokesperson said, our campus is already unsafe as it is, uh, as is, and we would like to abate this danger as much as possible. The Students for Socialism chapter spokesperson contended that the Rittenhouse trial effectively gives right-winged individuals the license to kill other individuals who, prote who protest for human rights. It was a riot. It was not a protest after the protest got, riot, uh, got, got into rioting. So it was a peaceful protest until bad actors within the, within the whole thing uh, decided to start putting fires on. In fact, he shot one of the people that lit a literal trash on fire in order to put it against a freaking building for it to go on and go, go with flames. So I'm sorry, that's kind of protecting um, not only people in general, but that's also protecting a business as far as I can see. Of course, again, I don't know. Anyway, right now it's took the lives of innocent people with the attempt to do so by strapping an assault rifle to himself and a crowd of unarmed citizens that is the textbook Definition of uh, intention. Uh, yeah, the decision made by the court is one of a thousand cases that have been influenced by biased judges, predominantly white juries, and mistakes inherent in a judicial system founded on injustice to begin with. I can agree with that to a certain degree. Anyway. So that was that story. I don't think that Arizona should be kicking them out. I do think that they should be giving some more money to the to their to those students um, place that they want to get more money to the care center. I also do think that dependent on what the <clears throat> excuse me the uh, the police department down there use the money for, uh, if say the they have far too much weaponry and not enough say decent wages for their cops and. Uh, health care and all that stuff, uh, then yeah, I, I, I would suggest they, would take, they should take some money out of that budget. But I don't know. Anyway, let's see. Uh, another piece here. Uh, Ohio's rally in Columbus to speak out against right-wing attack on health care. This was on the 20s. I didn't know. I don't, I don't really pay attention much to uh, liberation news, uh, at least these days anyway. Um, but I'm trying to get more into that covering a lot more stuff in regards to socialism, DSA, you know, just because I don't believe in what they're doing doesn't mean I can't like give it fair, uh, uh, like unedited fair assessment and coverage. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm planning on doing, but it's up to them. They let me know where the, they are uh, in Columbus, that is. Anyway, so let's see. On November 20th, just days after hundreds I had demonstrated against legislation attacking trans uh, children's health care, uh, activists from across Ohio gathered in Columbus to speak out against the increasingly brazen right-wing attacks on working people's health care. The Ohio legislature has recently introduced two bills that would severely impede on working class people's ability to access, to access vital health care. The first bill introduced on the 26th was uh, HB 454, which would make it illegal for healthcare providers, Medicaid, private insurance, or counselors to provide gender affirming care to trans children in direct opposition to the recommendation of medical experts from the American Academy of Pediatrics, who issued a policy statement on the matter in 2018. The second bill, HB 480, which was introduced on November 9th, uh, is much like the infamous Texas Senate Bill 8 in that it will, it will allow any individual the ability to sue another individual for more than 10000 for knowingly engaging in, con in conduct that aids or abets the performance or inducement of an abortion. 
However, Ohio HB 480 will, in fact, have more extreme ramifications than Texas SB 8, as it does not even allow for any abortion prior to six weeks after conception, as the Texas bill does. Language in Ohio's HB 480 will also most likely result in the closure of multiple plan, uh, planned parenthood, that's where they wanted to go, clinics throughout the state. Side note, I've, me and my fiance have actually driven past that uh, plan, the Planned Parenthood uh, where I know about in Columbus. There's usually about between three and four protesters. So I don't see it being worth it in regards to uh, defunding them because they actually, they actually do a lot more services other than abortion. Abortion, I think, is like 6% of their actual services compared to, anyway, uh, Let's see, da, da, da. Yeah, I, I, by the way, I couldn't really, I couldn't really uh, uh, think of uh, the alternative to that. Anyway, so let's see. Both bills attack vital, safe, uh, uh, life-saving health care and seek to disrupt working people's ability to assess it all the usage, the demands of a small minority of religious extremists. For example, without gender affirm affirmative care, uh, trans children are 50% more likely to commit suicide. HB 480 also shows a lack of concern for the lives of women as it provides no exception to its abortion ban, even to save the life of a pregnant person. Activists from across the state spoke out to a crowd in Columbus against the bill, two bills, and how they will negatively impact their communities. A local cultural worker and PSL organizer, Shen B. G. connected the attacks on bodily autonomy to the COVID-19 pandemic and imperialism and his uh, cavalier attitude towards the lives of working people. Now, I think that the person should, have, should be able to decide both. You should be able to decide if you're going to get an abortion and you should be able to decide if you're going to get a, food, uh, a COVID shot and the government should not uh, be involved in regards to um, in regards to telling you what to do as far as your body goes. And the funding, I do think that they should be. I do think that they should be allowed to fund uh, for medical procedures uh, or abortions. Uh, COVID nineteen, I don't think so. Um, but that, again, that's just me. I'm not vaccinated. So I'm not really doing it. Anyway. Um, Today, we'll see, uh, today we're seeing the ruling class launch their latest assault on the people. They are going to try and overturn Roe versus Wade. Uh, they are going to strip away the rights of trans people. Uh, they already have, to a certain degree. They are going to try and strip away the bodily autonomy, medical rights from women, trans men, non-binaries, trans and gender non-conforming people already have to a certain extent also. They will do this through the courts, through the legislative, on a local level to a national level. Okay, here's the thing about all of this. Two main things that if you want all this to change, you literally have to, to get out there and be a part of open primaries. Get open primaries going. Then, if need be, then get the uh, ranked choice voting. Otherwise, you're going to see the same damn thing over and over and over again. So, if you don't, if you want to change this, do the action. Don't just join a organization that, you know, overall makes its money based on like inciting certain things. Same thing, right wing. Same thing with Democrats. It's basically it's the politics as far as that part goes. If you want to change. The, the political atmosphere, you have to get open primary, which will allow multiple parties to be involved, whether, to be fair, uh, whether they be right wing or not. And if they are an FEC regulated, which means FCC uh, um, uh, recognizes them as a party, they get to be on the ballot. Now, ranked choice voting, as I'm, I'm also thinking of before, I was like, well, if we have open primaries, why would we want uh, ranked choice voting? Well, ranked choice voting actually helps with the ranking of the parties that people want and does take the spoiler effect out as well. So I kind of, you know, gone back to what I, I said before in regards to needing both of those. But 
again, now I'm glad that, uh, hold on. I apologize for the last part. Um, I will be back possibly later on to do this. Otherwise, um, go to opensecrets.com and see about anybody that may be running. If you don't agree with where they're getting the money from, then don't vote for them. Otherwise, do your best to get ranked choice voting and open primaries in your state if you really want change. And I would suspect that you get on the horn with Liberation News, uh, uh, Liberation News, uh, Green Party, and other, and you know, really get them to be out there and try to get and try to get these on or get these going, get them some support in regards to that. Let them know that they they have to actually they they want to have their party on the ballot at all times. To get open, uh, to get open, open primaries and range wise voting. Um, otherwise, there's really no point of voting for anybody in uh, the two party system because they both suck. They both are effed up, and they both don't really want to do anything for anybody except for themselves and their contributors. Basically, period. Uh, and you'll notice that every time they come out, it's only when midterms are up or some kind of surprise election comes up or you know, some to that effect. Green Party needs to be out there uh, within the community, helping community out, food banks, uh, book drives, whatever the case may be. And yes, it would be politically motivated, but at least they would be out there with the shirts on and whatever else. You know, that kind of like, you know, a, a community oriented thing. That way people know who you are, know what you represent, know that what you represent is out there for them and want to accomplish what they want to accomplish in regards to their own societal desires. Anyway. Thanks for listening. Um, please subscribe to this channel or subscribe to my anchor.fm slash just Calvin. Uh, also, pay attention to Twitter uh, at Real Sogan because I'll be on here in a couple of hours. Uh, I'll be on there in a couple of hours, excuse me, uh, via YouTube. Oh, not YouTube, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Twitter, uh, but via uh, StreamYard. And I will be streaming the event that is going to be going on down, down. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, subscribe. Uh, follow me on WGRN.org. Uh, follow me on, uh, on Anchor, Just Calvin. And follow me on YouTube, also Just Calvin, but is also under International Green Party and Socialist News. Thank you, LES. And by the way, if you want to monetarily support me, uh, you can go to uh, paypal.me slash capital GAP network. Or you could be a monthly subscriber to my uh, to my uh, to my anchor for forty nine cents a month, so it's not bad. I'm also if uh, introducing possibly uh, more of uh, the UK version of socialist, uh, which they do. They, they've had some couple of uh, workshops I put up there. So if you like that, please subscribe, please share, uh, please comment uh, on this and on in the in the Twitter feed. Either way, thank you for listening. I will. Talk to you later.